welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and today is Friday the 13th, which some would say is bad luck. Everything seems to be going quite smoothly with my cars this week, so I'm hoping that things ain't going to start taking a turn for the worst. Most people seem to be enjoying the daily vlogs at the moment, so thanks to everyone who has been in touch with positive comments, but it does mean that I've been going to bed at like 4am, but that's today's excuse out of the way as to why I've left the house at 2pm. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, the first thing I'm going to be focusing on today is changing the sump or Maud, my Maud or Mark II Escort, and I'm hoping that I'll also have time to fit her freshly rebuilt LSD. But we'll just have to see. If I don't get it done today, it's not a massive deal. I've still got two more days around the garage before I have to go back to work. It's not going to take me too long to get to the garage, and I've got to make a couple of stops on the way, so I'll catch up with you when I get there. Right, so I've made it to the garage and I've switched back into my greasy clothes. I think I'm going to throw this top away after this week because it's absolutely filthy. Look at that thick oil. I don't know what's going on in one of the gardens, but there's someone banging. Maybe they've got their first drum kit or something. I don't know. But I suppose that means there's less chance of any neighbours moaning about any noise that I'm making. So anyway, time to crack on with this sump job on Maud, my Maud or Mark II Escort. Now, if you watched the video yesterday, you'll know that the car is already in bits and I literally just need to remove the cross member which has still got the steering rack attached and then I'll be able to get to the bolts that hold the sump onto the engine. Now before I can remove the cross member obviously I need to take the weight of the engine but the engine hoist is still assembled from yesterday so I should literally be ready to remove the sump in just a few minutes. I'm going to set the hoist up and remove the cross member and I'll catch up with you afterwards. All right so got the hoist holding the engine up and I've got the cross member off. I have just ground away some of this cross member here to give a bit more clearance for the sump. Now this cross member was actually modified by my mate Nath because the sump wouldn't clear it. Now because this engine sits pissed in the bay on these mounts for some reason, they are retro forward mounts but I think they're the old design ones. I don't know, they came with this engine. So because it was sitting pissed in the bay, I put these two washers on this side engine mount which does make the engine sit level but it obviously pushes the engine over slightly. So I just noticed that it was a bit close to the cross member, which is why I've ground away a little bit there while I've got the chance. And I've just realised that what I should have done was had the hoist coming in from the side, because now it means I've got to lay over the legs of the hoist to get the sump off. Now I was planning to put the jack under the sump so that it doesn't fall on my head when I'm trying to take it off. So while I'm at it, I'm going to jack the engine up and just move the hoist round to the side to make life easier. Right, that's a lot better. Right, so the sump's off, pickup pipe's looking clear. This mounting face shouldn't take too much cleaning because the gasket has stayed intact. Neil has actually sent a new pickup pipe with the new sump, so I might as well fit the new pickup pipe as well. Right, I think I'm gonna clean up the mounting face now on the bottom of the block where the sump bolts to. It's not a nice job and I wanna get out of the way, but there's actually a couple of things I've bought that should make it a little bit easier. I came across this Victor Ryan's gasket removal spray online, so I'm gonna give that a go. And I've also got myself a gasket scraper. Now, normally I would just use a razor blade and hold it in my hand, which can be quite awkward. So I'm hoping that the scraper will make life easier for me. It came with a few blades like this, which you can store in the handle. And there's a couple of plastic type blades in there as well, which means there's less chance of you scratching the gasket face. So I'll leave a link in the description of this video to both of the listings on eBay. This is the new sump that I'm going to be fitting to Maud in a minute and I just thought I'd line it up next to the old one so that I can show you something that's different on the new one which I hope will ensure that it won't leak. Now this sump was supplied to me by Neil Dunn and I'll leave a link to his website in the description of this video. The old sump was also a Neil Dunn sump and because I've been having so much grief with this sump leaking, Neil agreed to send me a new sump free of charge. So. If you're watching, Neil, thank you so much for sending me out the new sump. I really appreciate it. And as promised, I'll send the old one back to you as soon as I can. Now, the difference between the new sump and the old sump 
is that the new sump now has a return lip on the mounting flange. As you can see, this one is just flat. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna help keep the flange nice and flat when you do the bolts up. Because the reason I believe this one was leaking is because when you do the bolts up, it makes the flange kink. Obviously where the bolts are done up, it's bent like that. And that's why I reckon it's leaking oil. Now there is one other thing that I've had made that should help this sump not leak. And it's actually something that people in the comments suggested I do the last time this sump leaked. Now I've had these spreader plates made up out of aluminium, which should help keep the flange nice and flat when I do the bolts up. So I've got one for that side and one for this side. And that is why I've got A and B written on the sump there because the sides of these ZTEC sumps are slightly different in terms of the gap between the holes, even though they look identical. I had these spreader plates made up by Carlo Varley at AR Varley and Sons Precision Engineers. He's based in Uxbridge. If you need anything done that requires a little bit of accuracy, definitely get in touch with Carlo and I'll leave his contact details in the description of this video. You may have noticed that the cut on this end is a bit ropey and that's because I've done that bit myself. Carlo was really busy this week and I was actually lucky that he's even able to fit me in. Now I was going to try a different brand of sump because I was having such a nightmare with the old Neil Dunn one, but with the return lip on the new sump and the spreader plates, I'm actually quite confident that this won't leak oil like the old one did. Opinions vary when it comes to using sealer on a sump gasket. I always like to use a tiny smear because it means that the gasket is gonna stay in position while you're offering the sump up. You definitely don't wanna to use too much because if any of it ends up inside, it can actually block your pickup pipe, which is gonna mean that you don't have any oil pressure. But I got in touch with Neil Dunn just to ask him what he would do when he's fitting these sumps because I wanna give this one every opportunity to not leak. Now he agreed with me that you should only use a tiny smear of sealer and he actually recommended that I use this Victor Rhine sealer. Now I like Victor Rhine's gaskets, so their sealers probably half decent as well. I got this on eBay and I'll leave a link in the description to the eBay listing. So basically I'm gonna use a tiny smear just to stick the gasket to the sump and then I'll give it another tiny smear on the top of the gasket and then I'm gonna offer the sump up to the engine and the order that I do the bolts in is I start with these two and then I move out to the next ones and do it cross and then I move out and do a cross on the final four. And that is also something that Neil agreed with. And just to change the subject slightly for a minute, when I was looking for the Victor Ryan sealer, I found the straight fitting that means I can now finish the plumbing for the oil catch can on my other Escort, Esther, the ST170 Mark I. Now, as you saw earlier, I bought these two packets of cap head bolts from Tool Station. I wasn't sure what size the bolts were that Neil supplied with the old sump, but I knew I was gonna need some slightly longer ones because of the thickness of these spreader plates. They only did two sizes of M8 socket bolts, so I bought both of them, although they're quite expensive because they're stainless, but it's all right, I'll add them to the massive collection I've got of brand new nuts and bolts. And it looks like these 20 mil socket cap bolts are the thickness of the spreader plates longer than the others, so. I'm going to use these 20 mil ones. Now I'm going to get the new Neil Dunn sump ready and bolt it to Maud's engine. Right, so that's the sump on, it took absolutely ages. I wasn't happy with how much of the gasket was poking out of the back of the sump, so I ended up dropping it back down and starting again. This is uh, just broken off, which I'm hoping means I've got a nice squeeze on the gasket. It's probably because of the spreader plates, obviously keeping it dead straight, so it's literally cut the gasket. But the mounting flange has stayed nice and flat, so hopefully it won't leak. When I was doing it up, I was tempted not to keep going until the torque wrench clicked, but I think if Neil's gone through the effort of putting the torque settings on a sticker on the side of the sump, it's best that I follow him. So time will tell if the new sump is gonna be any good, 
but I'm confident that it's got much more chance of sealing now that I've got those spreader plates from Carlo. So seeing as I'm not going to be driving this car until tomorrow at the very earliest, I'm not going to bother putting the oil in the engine. It might give the sealer a chance to go off a bit better, leaving it till tomorrow. So I think what I'm going to do now is crack on with getting the LSD fitted back in the axle. Okay, so since the last time I spoke to you, I've gone ahead and undone the bolts that were holding the half shafts into the axle casing and I've pulled the half shafts out slightly just so they're out of the way when I'm fitting the diff. Right, as you can see, I've given the inside of the axle casing a thorough clean out with brake cleaner and I'm glad I did. I'll explain why in a minute. I've got the diff gasket on and I've had this for ages. I bought a good few of them years ago and as soon as I pulled it out of the envelope, I knew it was going to rip. It was really brittle and then when I was putting it on the studs, you could tell that it had shrunk a bit probably from the change in temperature over the years while it's been in my garage. Luckily, it's only ripped in a few places outside the studs. So in theory, once a diff's in there, it should still seal. I'm probably gonna put a little bit of that Victorine sealer in the places that it has ripped. Once I've got the diff in the axle casing and before I fully tightened it up, I'll just push a bit of sealer in where those rips are. So here is the freshly rebuilt diff. Just to recap, for those who didn't see the video the other day when I removed this and took it down to the diff man, this diff has had every bearing replaced. It's had the pinion seal replaced, which was leaking, and I even bought a new pinion nut for it. And obviously, it's had the crush washer replaced. Now, the LSD unit in Maud's diff is a Tranex Salisbury type plated LSD, and the settings are 45 degree ramp angle on acceleration and deceleration. So it's just as aggressive on acceleration as it is on deceleration. I think that's what they call in the drift world a two-way diff. And I asked the diff man to set it up with a 70 pound preload. So it's really aggressive, which is how I like it. Now the crown wheel and pinion ratio that I've got on this diff is a 4.1 to 1, which is really good for acceleration, but not so good for top speed. So it's really loud on the motorway, but that doesn't bother me. I'm more interested in acceleration. The diff rebuild was carried out by Southern Axle Services, who are based in Watford. I've been using them for a few years now, never have any problems. In fact, I've always wanted to have a go at rebuilding a diff myself, but I never bother doing it because the service, the price, and the turnaround time is just so good at Southern Axle Services. So if you're anywhere near Watford and you need any rear axle work done at all, definitely get in touch with Southern Axle Services, and I'll leave their contact details in the description of this video. What I'm going to do now is bolt the prop shaft back onto the diff flange. Right, the sun's going down now, so apart from putting the cross member back on the car so that I can get the hoist back in my garage, there's not much else I'm going to be doing today. I'm really happy that I've got the sump and the LSD fitted, and I can't wait to come back around here tomorrow and hopefully get moored back on the road. If you thought this video was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you thought it was shit, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe and activate the notification bell to be kept right up to date with any other videos that I post in the future. Make sure you check out my Facebook and my Instagram, and I'll leave the links you need for that in the description as well. Until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>